on fixed laws. But I want to spend a few moments on the constants of nature too, because these are again used, assumed to be constant. Things like the gravitational constant, the speed of light, are called the fundamental constants. Are they really constant? Well, when I got interested in this question, I tried to find out. Uh, I, it, they're given in physics handbooks. Handbooks of physics list the existing fundamental constants and tell you their value. But I wanted to see if they'd changed, so I got the old volumes of physical handbooks. I went to the Patent Office Library here in London, and uh, they're the only place I could find that kept the old volumes. Normally people throw them away when the new values come out. Uh, they throw away the old ones. When I did this, I found that the speed of light dropped between 1928 and 1945 by about 20 kilometers per second. It's a huge drop because they're given with errors of any fractions of a se uh, fra decimal points of error. And yet, all over the world, it dropped, and they were all getting values very similar to each other with tiny errors. And then in 1945, it went up, 48, it went up again. And um, then people started getting very similar values again. I was very intrigued by this, and I couldn't make sense of it. So I went to see the head of metrology at the National Physical Laboratory in Teddington. Um, metrology is the science in which people measure constants. And I asked him about this. I said, what do you make of this drop in the speed of light between 1928 and 1945? And he said, oh dear, he said, you've uncovered uh, the most embarrassing episode in the history of our science. <laughs> so I said, well, could the speed of light have actually dropped? And that would have amazing implications if so. He said, no, no, of course it couldn't have actually dropped. It's a constant. So, oh. Uh, well, then, how do you explain the fact everyone was finding it going much slower during that period? Is it because they were fudging their results to get what they thought other people should be getting and the whole thing was just produced by, in the minds of physicists? Um, he said, we don't like to use the word fudge. I said, well, what do you prefer? He said, well, uh, we prefer to call it intellectual phase locking. Uh, <laughs> So I said, well, if it was going on then, how can we say, sure, it's not going on today? And that the present values are produced by intellectual phase locking. And he said, oh, we know that's not the case. I said, how do we know? He said, well, he said, we've solved the problem. And I said, well, how? He said, well, we fixed the speed of light by definition in 1972. <laughs> so I said, but it might still change. He said, yes, but we'd never know it because we've defined the meter in terms of the speed of light. So the units had changed with it. So he looked very pleased about that. They'd fixed that problem. <laughs> but I said, well, then what about big G, the gravitational constant known in the trade as big G? It's written with a capital G. Newton's universal gravitational constant. That's varied by more than 1.3% in recent years. Um, and it seems to vary from place to place and from time to time. And he said, oh, well, those are just errors. And uh, unfortunately, there are quite big errors with big G. Um, so I said, well, what if it's really changing? I mean, perhaps it is really changing. And um, then I looked at how they do it. What happens is they measure it in different labs. They get different values on different days. And then they average them. And then other labs around the world do the same. And they come out usually with a rather different average. And then the International Committee on Metrology meets every 10 years or so and average the ones from labs around the world to come up with the value of big G. But what if G were actually fluctuating? What if it changed? There's already evidence, actually, that it changes throughout the day and throughout the year. Maybe they all change together. What if these errors are going up together and down together? For more than 10 years, I've been trying to persuade metrologists to look at the raw data. In fact, I'm now trying to persuade them to put it online, on the internet, with the dates and the actual measurements, and see if they're correlated, to see if they're all up at one time, all down at another. If so, they might be fluctuating together, and that would tell us something very, very interesting. But no one has done this. They haven't done it because G's are constant. There's no point looking for changes. You see, here's a very simple example of where uh, a dogmatic assumption actually inhibits inquiry.